Now that Gremlin is in the books, I thought I should do what I did for Psygnosis, have a little list celebrating the best of their work. I played a hell of a lot of their games after all, so why not have one little look back just to put a cherry on top of the whole thing? Now this was going to be a top 10 cause that's the usual format, but the thing with Gremlin is, well while I don't think they ever released a game that would be up there with the greatest games of all time or anything, so much of their stuff was really freaking good. A top 10 is just not big enough for all of it. That's a mark of how awesome they were I suppose. And so I've had to double it. So without any further ado, here's my personal Gremlin Top 20. And even with 20 I sure as hell didn't have to reach to fill the list. Now even with 20 games I still have a couple of honourable mentions. Body Harvest and Venus the Flytrap both came close, one for having good ideas, the other for fantastic music, but they just fell short of the 20. And sometimes I felt it better to have one representative from a certain genre, so time will tell whether you see either Realms of the Haunting or Normality. I should also mention that while Gekido was covered in the videos and would have been a top 10 game for sure, it technically wasn't published or developed by Gremlin and therefore doesn't count. I should also note that, as is traditional, there will only be one game per franchise, which again goes to show just how many awesome Gremlin games there are. So. Let's do it. Vant. Jack the Nipper starts us off. It's one of those odd specky games where, to be honest, you don't know all that much about what you're doing, but it is fun to screw around in. And it just looks so good too. Aesthetically, I can think of very few games that just fit the spectrum perfectly like this one does. It's a game that will suit basically anyone who likes to annoy people. The Snuff. It was kind of difficult to choose between Hero Quest and Space Crusade, I really like both. However, this one just edges it. I like how faithful it is to the board game, the world and isometric graphics, and the music. It may be a little bit too plain for some, but this game just takes me back to how much I fiddle around with the actual board game when I was 7 years old, reading the manuals and getting lost in Return to Barak Tor. It's a wonderful package. This wheat. Disposable Hero is a virtually forgotten shooter that, to be honest, is probably as good as your favourite, much more popular Amiga shooter. And anyway, it's far better than the likes of Xenon 2. It's got the challenge, it's got your pumping soundtrack, and it's massively influenced by our type. What more could you ask for? Well worth seeking out this one. Deset. Deflector next, a classic by Vortex Software, even if it isn't isometric. It's the sort of puzzle game that I love, controlling a laser through mirrors not just to get to an end point, but to destroy orbs. It can be a right head scratcher as you endlessly play the game in your head, trying to think of all the possible combinations. And you're against the clock. This is just another great game from one of the 8-bit era's greatest developers and, and something quite nice for Gremlin to publish. Says. Now I have to admit to not exactly being huge on adventure type stuff in the grand scheme of things. I have a lot of respect for Realms of the Haunting and I do think it's brilliant but this is a favourite list and ultimately all the action, sports and racing games that Gremlin made ended up pushing it down. That's no knock against it though, it's beautifully realised, atmospheric and a game that never stops surprising you. If you like adventure, this would probably be number one on your Gremlin list without a doubt, either that or normality. And again, it was tough to choose between them. Cans. I used to think that Loaded was rather humdrum, an early PS1 game that nobody remembered well. I even said as much in a video once. A lot of people told me that I was wrong, and indeed I was, wrong and foolish. I certainly got the appeal of Loaded when looking at it properly for this video, and seeing just how important a game it was when it came to establishing Gremlin on the PlayStation. It's a great take on the classic gauntlet alien breed formula, with buckets of glorious blood and viscera chucked about everywhere. And of course, pop will eat itself on the soundtrack. What a game. Kattos. Fragile Allegiance is here. The third part of a trilogy that includes Utopia and K240, all three games are a solid mix of resource hunting, colony building and general intergalactic shenanigans. Fragile Allegiance is the last and the best. Great graphics for the time, and it's all just so much clearer than the other two. Still, I mainly like to just have fun building whatever I can, wondering just what's going on down there. But for those who want to get deeper, endless hours of strategy, farming, and careful negotiating with aliens await. 
Twiz. Zool is arguably Gremlin's most famous game. In a way, he was the Amiga's mascot. At least for a time. In many people's eyes, the game hasn't aged well, but I still dig it. However, only enough for 13th. The collecting aspect of the game can be a little annoying. What was tricky was choosing the game. I always thought that I preferred Zool 2, but in playing them for these videos, I found that while Zool 2 was a cleaner game, it amped up the most irritating aspects of Zool, like the collecting. The original has the better design, still has the speed and the cool moves, and for me is still quite a lot of fun. Although, only on the Amiga, mind, I wouldn't touch any of the console ports or that sort of thing. Does. And again, this sums up just how tough a gremlin list is. So many of the games are crammed together on pretty much the same level, so much so that in the end, Monty gets pushed down to 12th. It's an iconic series, of course, one of the best of the old 80s flip screen platformers. It just got crowded out. And again, it was difficult to choose which Monty game to go for. This one and Alfie Zane Monty have always been really close for me, but Monty on the one just about won out. This decision can be summed up in three words. That freaking music. Just, yeah. One of the best soundtracks and one of Gremlin's best 8-bit games. Arms. I couldn't not have one of the Supercars games on here, and Supercars 2? Well, it's a simple as hell top-down racer, only with the option to blast your opponents with missiles and the odd little weird cutscene between racers. There isn't much to the game, perhaps, but it doesn't matter at all when what's here is so bloody good. It's just pretty simple. When magnetic fields are on the game, and they're doing a racing game, the result is virtually guaranteed to be excellent. This. Shadow Fighter. One of the last games Gremlin released on the Amiga, but actually one of the first games that I played on an Amiga. On an Amiga action cover tape of all things. So it does kind of hold a special place in my heart. But no matter what, it's a fantastic game. One that's sadly not well known due to its late arrival. For a single button beat em up, it manages to pack a hell of a lot of moves in while still being an easy game to pick up and play. Shadow Fighter is awesome and well worth a go. Play it now. Nerf. Next up is one of Gremlin's most ambitious games, Hard War. A thoroughly open space trading game set on the moon of Titan that allows you to be as bad or as good as you want to be and gives you full reign over a rather dank world. If you ever wanted a space trading game complete with music from folks like Ortequa and Squarepusher, then this is undoubtedly the game for you. And more than anything else, it's dying for a proper re-release on GOG.com. Can someone just make that happen already? People need to play Hard War again, simple as that. Wheat. Actua Soccer is one of Gremlin's most important games. It left just about every other football game standing, and gave EA something to think about. Actua Soccer 3 is the least known game of the series, but it's also the best. The presentation, sound and graphics for the time are brilliant still, but the game's really been tightened up in this one to a very strong level, one that's not exactly far away from the almighty likes of ISS Pro and Road to World Cup 98. It's one of the best footy games on the PS1, and it's such a shame that it was Actua Soccer's last. Set. Gremlin certainly made plenty of waves right from the get-go, but the original Bounder has to go down as one of their best. Not only does it look great and have such a cool concept, but it's got amazing gameplay. It's just so addictive. It is incredibly hard, and at times thoroughly unfair, but as a game it is, quite frankly, genius. Everything about it, from the music that's right on the verge of fucking irritating, to the oh-so-simple rhythm of it all, will stick in your head forever. Cease. Switchblade simply had to be on here. This was the game that basically got Gremlin going again, a big hit at a time when they really needed it. The game stood out thanks to its Japanese ape in art style, but it stuck around because it was excellent. A flip screen platformer that's absolutely chock full of secrets, a game that you can really get stuck into and explore every inch of, hit every block. One of the last and greatest efforts in this thoroughly British genre from the 8-bit era, Switchblade was a champion on just about every format going, including many of the lesser regarded ones. And for that, it deserves to be regarded as one of Gremlin's best. Sank. 
Now, strangely enough, I sort of slept on Top Gear a little when I was doing the vids, treating it as just an offshoot of Lotus, which I guess it is in a way. And surely original Top Gear may be pretty damn similar to Lotus 1. But it still helped Gremlin get a reputation on consoles. A very compulsive driving game, despite the forced split screen. Of course, like a fair few Gremlin titles, a lot of this does have to do with fantastic music and Top Gear unquestionably has one of the quintessential driving game soundtracks. Barry Leach, step up and take a bow. Quattro. It feels kind of odd for an arcade port to be this high, and Gremlin didn't exactly release it, but they did develop it so it surely counts, and Gauntlet on the Spectrum is one of the best ports of them all, a game that I've played for hours. Why? Simple. What this port of Gauntlet loses in graphics, it makes up for in play. It's so fast and furious, and the keyboard is absolutely perfect for controlling Gauntlet. Besides, Gauntlet wasn't ever known for being a looker in the first place, was it? This is one of the quintessential ports of a classic game, one of the best you'll find on the Specy, and it's Gremlin's highest chart in 8-bit title on the list. Trois. We've had supercars, we've had Top Gear, Obviously we were going to have Lotus. All of the Lotus games are great and any one of them could have made it. Hell, Lotus 1 basically did thanks to Top Gear. And so with that in mind, the utterly refined Lotus 3 takes the slot. There isn't much here that's different from Lotus 2, but the tracks are better, the music's back, and the speed, as ever, is unmatched. Lotus 3 remains the Amiga's quintessential arcade racing game, and the series knocks almost anything else in the genre from the 16-bit era into a cocked hat. As far as arcade racers go, it's flawless. Duh. Now some might be surprised to see this game so high up, if you don't know me anyways. But I've said it before and I'll say it again, Premier Manager 3 is my favourite football management game. I have played this game far more than any other game on this list, possibly more than all of them combined. The simple conceit of forcing you to try to take a team from the conference all the way to Premiership glory makes the game a brilliant experience, gives you a story, something to aim for that isn't just continuing to get results with an already great team. Is that going to be enough for anyone who doesn't like football? Probably not, but I'd be lying if I said that Premier Manager 3 wasn't one of my absolute favourite Gremlin games. And so, it climbs all the way up to the one up spot. On. But in the end, well, Gremlin saved their best for last. Hogs of War is usually regarded as the last true Gremlin game, the last one to feature names like Adrian Carlos, Ian Stewart and Jacob Hapgood prominently, the last before the infograms machine fully swallowed them up. A title with a fierce cult reputation, it does worms in 3D far better than those invertebrates ever did. Every single move in the game is utterly satisfying, there's so much variation, a great campaign, plenty of awesome options. For a game that's spent so long in development, the end result really does feel quite effortless. And of course there's the small matter of the late and forever loved Wick Mail doing all of the game's voices, as if the game wasn't brilliant enough. I wondered for a good long while if I was actually going to go ahead and put this game at the top spot. But as this top 20 shows, Gremlin were a group of many talents, creating great games in so many genres, all of which had that little spin to make them unmistakably their work. And no title sums that spirit up quite as well as Hogs of War. In the end, it's a thoroughly deserving number one. And so there you have it, my top 20 favourite Gremlin games. Hopefully you've enjoyed the list and, more than anything else, I hope you've enjoyed the series of Gremlin videos. They took a long time to make and the response to them has been brilliant. Thanks to all who've watched, all who've supported them. And a big thanks also to Mark Hardesty as the author of Gremlin in the Works for his encouragement, support and inexhaustible insight in the comments. Once again, if you wish to know more about Gremlin, then do go to bitmapbooks.com and purchase the book. It's not just a brilliant look at one company, but a look at an entire scene with input from so many people who were there. An essential read. And with that, it's time to end. As ever, I shall say, wherever you are, and whoever you be, have a good one, take care, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.
Thanks for watching this video. On the end screen you can see all the usual options such as watching another video, a link to my channel and also a link to my Patreon account which is where you can get on the list of the great and the good you see scrolling there. If you follow any of these options then thank you so much. And also don't forget that you can win the bell too. See ya!